Hey, this is Curtis Waters. I'm a musician and I'm dropping an album called Bad Son. And you're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Yeah. My name is Abhay Dandekar, and I share conversations with talented and interesting individuals linked to the global Indian and South Asian community. It's informal and informative, adding insights to our evolving cultural expressions, where each person can proudly say, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Hey, everyone. On this episode of Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing, a conversation with musician and artist Curtis Waters. Stay tuned. So once again, thank you for listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing and sharing it with your friends and for following us on social media. Now, if you're enjoying it, please take a moment to rate and review as it's very, very much appreciated. So, you know, in a world of multiple personas and multiple versions of our introverted and extroverted selves, art and music remain wonderful ways to display it all. Yet as public facing and outward as musical expression might be, it can in fact also be the vehicle we need for an escape a therapeutic sanctuary, and even a healthy companionship. And this can be especially true when the ongoing self-discovery is filled with open questions around honesty, trust, identity, and learning. This is exactly what I found when I recently chatted with musician, producer, and artist Curtis Waters. Curtis, who was born Abhinav Bastakoti, was born in Nepal and after moving to Germany and then Calgary, Canada, finally moved to North Carolina, where he was attending college and working at a smoothie shop. The artistic journey that started with drawing and designing clothing and selling it out of his locker found its way into making music, as his first single, Stunnin', was an overnight summer sensation in 2020, and his album, Pity Party, was an introduction to his multiplicity as a musician, with shades of rap, hip-hop, electro-pop funk, and many visceral emotional states, from being braggadocious and confident to insular and sobering. The success found him navigating through life and fame and the music business, moving to LA and finding his own self-assurance and freedom in being the son of Nepali immigrant parents and peace as someone with mental health struggles. Curtis has a new album called Bad Son and on one of the tracks called Himbo, he calmly states that he's just here for the party. And so when we caught up as he was spending some time at his mom's house in North Carolina, I was curious about this metaphor in the context of all his art and the characters he shares through his music. So I asked him whether he feels more comfortable as a party goer or a party thrower. I hate throwing parties. I don't like throwing parties at all. People are gonna steal my shit. People are gonna <laughs> vandalize my items. I don't like that at all. I don't. I think I've only thrown like two parties. And one time I threw a party and these people like stole my alcohol and they had sex in my bathroom all night. I didn't enjoy that. I'm never throwing a party. Not good. Not good, right? Not not the not the nicest uh, thing for your house or for your property. Um, yeah. Do Do you feel comfortable um, in that way, sort of like you know blending in, or are, do you sort of seek out the attention when you're at a party? Um, it really depends. I feel like I have like multiple personalities sometimes. Like right now, I'm definitely in my hermit phase where yeah, I just like want to be left alone. I don't want to see anyone. I'm just want to make music and like read like books about meditation and all this like other shit you know but then i feel like i'll go through like periods where i'm like i want to be the biggest superstar in the world and i'm yeah. partying and doing all this stuff you know what i mean but um i thought uh himbo was sort of just like like a character you know it's like a funny yeah. like a satire in a way well and, and in some ways kind of people are are throwing parties around you right i mean like your your music is yeah. sort of the, the soundtrack and in many ways for a lot of different events and things that are going on. Yeah. Is it, do you feel comfortable in that situation where you're sort of at, you're someplace, you're at an event and all of a sudden your art happens to be in the background? Oh, not at all. No, I'm, I'm very shy. I get very uncomfortable. I feel very weird. It's very nice. I think uh, people are being nice, you know, people are trying to flatter yeah. me, but I don't know. I, I'm, I think I'm a pretty shy person regardless of what I think my music, um, may make it seem um i don't know i feel pretty yeah it's weird is it more that you get like sort of self-conscious about the fact that like hey that happens to be me in the background or or is it sometimes you feel kind of like critical about the idea that your music is kind of on display 
I just think it's like being naked. It's like weird. Even if it's like a fun song, it's kind of odd, you know? It's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I think some people really like relish in like the attention and all that stuff. And um, it yeah. really depends. Like if I'm at a show where I'm like, okay, I'm being Curtis Waters. I'm like in character. Yeah. I'm going to be this crazy person and I'm going to entertain everyone. That's great. Like I love attention in that setting. Yeah. But you know, if I'm like going for a walk with my mom or someone comes up to me or yeah. like, I'm just like, I'm like Abby mode. Like I'm fully Abby. Like I'm grocery shopping or like yeah. it catches me off guard. I'm like, oh my God, this is yeah. a lot. You know? um, Cause I, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, uh, I don't know. There's like a, it's like a character, right? Sure. And then there's also the real me. So when I think when that, it kind of um, mixes, I think there's yeah. like this like awkward feeling. It's it's sort of like you know when those worlds collide or when they merge together, yeah. it's sort of a strange thing to sort of like shape shift and go kind of back and forth. It's funny. I mean, you know, I think the the weirdest probable uh, merge of that happens, like you said, you're at the grocery store and all of a sudden your music's in the background, or or like you're on a plane yeah. and your music happens to be one of those songs that's actually you know playing in the background. Yeah. Is that a, is that a um, weird tough thing? You were gonna say something. No, in... that's that's kind of funny. That's cool. Um, I think um. I appreciate being recognized, you know, it's cool, yeah. but I definitely get like kind of like still like shy about yeah. it, you know, which is funny. Like I get like, I feel like it's like when you see like a snake and you're like, like the snake is scared of you, but you're like more scared of the snake, but right. maybe that's a weird analogy, but I can like, <laughs> I, like sometimes when I'm walking in public, especially yeah. like I'll notice like brown kids or whatever, someone will like stare at me for like an extra four seconds and I'm like, okay do they know me or am I being narcissistic or <laughs> then it's like, we're both like looking at each other, but right. no one's like engaging in it. So it's kind of like that. But, um, you know, I if my you. music plays up like the radio or like the gym, like, I think it's cool. It's funny. Yeah. You know, this, this new yeah. album feels and sounds like it's like you mentioned, it's got a lot of characters, a lot of moods, a lot of personas yeah. kind of layered into it. And, and in some ways, is that is that kind of liberating to explore? Like you mentioned that, like, you know, you have different characters that and those kind of images and, and identities that you're putting on. W was that somewhat liberating to explore a little bit more on this particular album? Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, you know, I think on your day to day human, you're sort of boxed in in society and it's really hard to say certain things and. But I think like the human experience is so contradictory, you know, like we have so many beliefs and thoughts and dreams and um, passions that completely go against each other all the time. You know, like when I think about who am I as a person, yeah. um, I'm someone completely different to completely different people. And I think when I was making this album, it was sort of difficult at first because it felt like every song I was making felt like totally different people. But I think at the end of the day, it's it's authentic, you know, even though there's all yeah. these characters, they're, they're just a vehicle for me to say what I feel authentically. Yeah. Um, and I thought, and I found a way to sort of make it all work together. And there's sort of this like cinematic universe thing that's going on in there. And I'm sort of building it right now, but um, it is liberating. There's a lot of things I am saying on this album that I would never say to a person if I'm just like talking to them, you know? I'm curious if, discovering that personally about yourself right this sort of like the cinematic feel to it where there's many characters many moods etc was that a was that a surprise to you when you when you started like out on the process of making this album or writing it and and then sort of making it come together in the, from the production aspect i think um someone was talking about like how the first book you ever write is like you've been working on your whole life so it didn't necessarily yeah. feel like a surprise to me because even though it's not my first album, the idea for this album, Bad Son, I had since I was 14 years old. So I'm 23 now. And yeah. every project I've made since then was my attempt at making Bad Son. And then I felt like, oh, it's not Bad Son yet. So I would change the name. So for Bad Son to be what it is now at 23, there's a lot of surprises. But what doesn't surprise me is the characters. Because actually, yeah. when I was like 15, I wrote a comic book and I wrote... Curtis Waters as the main character and I had all these different characters that were going to be playing this right. album. You know what I mean? So that was actually one of the first things that I invented about the album before the music, before the production, before the lyrics, it was this idea of different characters. Um, Almost like coming this concept of age, like, that you had like a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I have the, I have the paper here somewhere in my mom's house. I have all these like little like sketches and stuff. Like I made like damn near 10 years ago. 
So, I mean, yeah. it's just great to be able to actually realize it, you know, which is great. Well, and in thinking about that, right? So it's been sort of an evolution where you had the concept. Now the sort of music and the soundtrack sort of builds around that concept and something that you you dreamt of and, and put down on paper and now is being realized. Um, I'm curious, right? We were just talking about this a little bit where there's different characters and also how we respond um, you know, to our own sort of names. Do, do you think or maybe even respond differently when someone calls you Abhi or Abhino um, as opposed to you know, yeah. someone referring to you as uh, in character as Curtis Waters? Yeah, I think uh, Abi feels like family, and Abi. I think usually immigrants, uh, like brown people, or like people of color, call me Abi. So I think there's yeah. this level of uh, I think more. I don't know. Like I feel like more humble when someone calls me Abi. Like I don't know what the right uh, description is, but I feel like yeah. human. I think you know. Whereas when someone calls me Curtis, sure. I feel like I'm definitely like um, I have a little bit of a facade or a front, and I'm able to do more things as Curtis because there's more leeway as a character, I think, but Abby sure. is uh, more vulnerable, I think, you know. Yeah. When you think about that, like sort of being vulnerable and being more human, perhaps, whereas Curtis being sort of a, a facade or a product or even someone who allows you and, and in some ways kind of liberates you to express your art. Yeah. It is, I, I, the reason I asked that question is because being that immigrant story, that that being a person of color, it's such an, a critical part of your overall story and the mm -hmm. fact that it manifests in your art. Is there an element of Abhi that clearly is uh, not just hidden, but overtly present in your music and in your art, even though the, the front cover is, is still Curtis? I think um, there are moments, right? Like, I think when I'm talking about my mom or my family, I think it's very yeah. like no performance no um you know nothing shiny no no quirks nothing like the first track inner child you know it goes from my mom talking and then when i start like my verse about my mom and my dad it feels very like oh this is just ubby you know but then when yeah. you get to like himbo like that is so curtis waters you know or yeah. I, I, but here's the interesting thing about being ubby is it's also although it's vulnerable it's also restrictive because there's things that i could never say about my life yeah. as a B that I could because I have the character Curtis Waters. You know what I mean? Sure. Like um the last track Bad Son, it's this like or it's called American Dream, yeah. American Dream, yeah. it's like this super long, like fucking trauma heavy, whatever, whatever, fucking yeah. crazy song, right? And uh as Ubby, I would never able to make that because you're like, oh my god, this is my life, it's too close. Yeah. But I think when you're Curtis Waters, you sort of speak as this character that is you know over encompassing and you can sort of make it like oh this is the immigrant story so it doesn't feel mm -hmm. so like oh that happened to me that was you know yeah you're listening to trust me i know what i'm doing after a quick break we'll come back to our conversation with musician and artist curtis waters stay tuned conversation it's the antidote to apathy and the catalyst for relationships I'm Abhay Dandekar, and I share conversations with global Indians and South Asians, so everyone can say, trust me, I know what I'm doing. New episodes weekly, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hi, I'm Utkar Shambutkar. I'm an actor, a musician, producer, writer at all, and you are listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Welcome back to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Let's rejoin our conversation now with musician and artist, Curtis Waters. I'm curious what you had as responses for people listening to your music and getting to know you more globally. So like if their audience is listening to your music in Nepal, do you think that they're actually listening in some ways and kind of also understanding a little bit more about the backdrop of who you are as Abhi, uh, as well as the Curtis Waters kind of persona? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I think um, I haven't like been to Nepal in like 10 years. So I haven't really yeah. been able to like touch base with them personally. I know a lot of Nepali yeah. people are really proud of like stunning and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And I get a lot of love from there, but I'm not sure like how deep of an understanding there is about the characters and all that stuff. 
But I do yeah. know people that went on tour this year, a few months ago, like immigrants really get it. Like like diaspora, like first generation immigrants, like people that have yeah. come here from somewhere else, even if you're not South Asian, whatever, they really get it. Like they get the characters, they get the story, they get the you know ups and downs, the guilt, everything. They they really get it. So I think I've realized like right. I don't think I mean maybe I mean the music can speak to anyone, but I think the people that really um, relate are probably people that came from somewhere else, you know, that have to prove it. Yeah. I was thinking about kind of the progression of things for you. And if Stunnin' was kind of a volcanic introduction to your work and Pity mm -hmm. Party was the kind of host for that debut, what's been the narrative for the in-between of kind of getting from that place and that phase to now releasing this album? You know, so like kind of like the, the substrate in between those steps. It was a lot of trial and error. It was a lot of, um, you know, I think Stunning was such a huge pop song that I felt so yeah. much immense pressure to try to get another plaque and go um, right, you know, go pop, go clean, go um, plastic, you know. And I think I yeah. tried that and it was successful commercially, but I was just miserable. I just hated it. I wanted to quit music. I was so just humiliated by my work because I felt like, you know, even if I do make a pop song, it needs to have a message and it needs to fit into this world and has purpose in my story and all this stuff rather than just like, you know, cause I wasn't, you know, I wasn't making music to make money. I just ended up making money. So I was like, yeah. you know, I can't like chase it. Right. Whereas then right. afterwards, I think I went super left field, which is also like an ego um, response, I think, because I was like, I'm cool. Look at me. I can make aggressive left field music, but it wasn't necessarily yeah. music that, spoke to me nor was it serving a bigger purpose right right and i think i've found a middle ground where it's not about the aesthetic or the sound but it's just about the bigger purpose and the story and just totally. finding yeah, like all the tools that you can use like like i like himbo from this album and bunny just as much as i like inner child and death keeps calling my name but that's because it fits the story you know what i yeah. mean and yeah. it all feels intentional um, rather than just like trying to show that I'm cool or trying to show that I can make money yeah. or trying to like, you know. Well, but you know, that same kind of like weave in and out, right? That like trial and error. I, I'm I'm going back to this sort of house party analogy where like, you know, you have something that allows you to enter the front door and then you kind of walk through the house, but your aim is to get back to the backyard and just chill. Yeah. In, in some ways, like getting through the house of this, that trial and error it is has it made you a different artist or performer do you look at things differently um do you have more patience does it change the way that you practice or or that you sort of like create the art yeah i mean dude it was such a like a identity crisis you know because when something like that happens yeah. so fast you're not even planning it because it's not like you're making a song and you're thinking i'm gonna have a billion streams but that yeah. happens and everyone loves you all of a sudden and there's all these expectations and all these things happening that you never expected. And sure. it changed me as a person. Like I, I really, you know, like, I'm like a, I'm like a 19 year old bipolar kid. Like it'll fuck up your ego. Like you literally yeah. are the highest of the high. And you right. feel it crashing down. That's just how anything works. If you go up, you got to come down. So it was really, really hard on me. Sure. And I think I made songs like God's Lonely Man and Death Keeps Calling My Name at those time and even American Dream. But I've come out of it, you know, and I'm sort yeah. of like really happy and I'm seeing it for what it is, which is that like I got really lucky with a song that I made for fun as a joke. Yeah. And now I'm able to, you know, like make music for the rest of my life and like pursue what I love to do rather than like being yeah. stuck in my tropical smoothie job or all this stuff. So I think when you yeah. take out all the external pressure and the validation and the ego and the fame and whatever out of it, it's incredible. You know, like I yeah. have freedom, you know, I, the, yeah. but the, the freedom only comes after you um, are comfortable letting everybody down. You know, it's sure. like, fuck the billboard, fuck the plaques, whatever. Like, let me yeah. just tell my story, make what I want to make. Yep. And I'm at that point now where I'm not even seeking that anymore. So I feel really good about what I'm doing, you know? Let me, let me ask you something. What, what has been, like you mentioned that sort of like it, this was sort of started in sort of a weird serendipitous way. And then you have like a, a pretty big magnifying glass on you and your work, you know, as soon as that happens, mm -hmm. what is, you know, this business, you know, what's, what's the music business so far 
in some ways kind of taught you about honesty? I think um, I was, people are evil. I think it was the first time um, I realized people could be evil, which um, I was very naive. I think growing up, I always had this idea that you have to be really vulnerable and honest and you have to just let it out there and, you know, you'll attract people like you. And um, I think it's true, but I'm realizing you also need to have defense. You know, you also need to know who's listening, who you're talking to, who you're, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I think I had to grow up, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a scary place, honestly, the music industry. And I guess any industry could be, you know, when money's involved, when it's so much at stake, you know, there's a lot of greedy people. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of interests. Um, and I think I came to a place where I, I was very jaded. I was very, um, I wasn't trusting anyone. I was having a really difficult time in my yeah. life and all this stuff because of my experience in the music industry. But I, you know, since then I've met a lot of people that have helped me become vulnerable again, have helped me become honest again, genuine again. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's no like right or wrong answer, but I think, you know, it's, it's important to trust, but it's also important to discern, you know? Yeah, no, that's a great way to put that. And, and in fact, the, the thing that came to my mind was for you, has the process been it, at the end it's still all about your art right so like is mm-hmm. the trust part of it one that you know hey at, at the end forget about the people involved the art is where the ultimate trust comes from i think in your art you always have to be honest right um yeah i think the thing with that is like art is um you know there's different ways to go about it like my pity party album i made completely in my mom's like guest room you know just working by myself after work at tropical smoothie which yeah. was great but um this album i wanted to be bigger you know so i have i'm working with other guitarists sessionists like people that i'm meeting in la all these people yeah and you know i take help from my manager i have people that i hire to mix my music that i, I right. take their advice i listen to my girlfriend i, I ask everybody how they feel about it and yeah. i disagree with people i agree with some people i hire people to do videos so it's like i i want to make something that isn't just like only satisfying me in that exact moment you know because sure. you have a lot of blind um you're blind to a lot of things um and you're you have a lot of biases right yeah. that you might even grow out of so i think for this project i've really like stayed with it and uh, a big reason it's so great is because i've had people push back on certain ideas of mine yeah. and i've either agreed with it or I've become even stronger in my belief, right? But you yeah. do need people that you trust, that you can be honest with to challenge you. Totally. And I think, you know, art isn't just this wishy-washy. I think there's some level of like order and structure and hierarchy to it still, you know? Yeah. So I think I was really able to do my best with this one. It's funny you say that, that like, you know, because there is some order, there's some structure to it. It also means that labels get placed in, in a certain way. And And I was thinking about the music and how easily it sort of floats between genres, right? There's hip hop, there's punk, mm-hmm. there's rock, there's electronica. You know, is is that kind of label or structure um, to the music, does that seem sort of relevant or even fair to you? And does it matter for that matter? I think it's just like exciting, dude. It's just like I get yeah. bored of the same color. I get bored of the same <laughs> palette all the time. Yeah, I don't think about it too much, but I think or in hindsight, you look at it and be like, oh, this guitar tone in this album sort of signifies that I'm talking about my family or whatever, yeah. right? Or like it's sort of this like it, there's a theme to it that you might not pick up, right? And then this yeah. like 808 is like, oh, this is braggadocious. This is like, you know, so it's sort of like it's just like different paint tools, you yeah. know, and all these yeah. different genres are just tools that just uh, accentuate like the, the mood I'm going for, right? And right. Um, the great thing is it's not forced. That's what I listen to. Like if you look at my playlist, it's just like fucking Elliot Smith and then Death Grips and then fucking Claro. And it's just like yeah. so much random shit, right? And that's what I like. So right. that's sort of what ends up happening, you know? And um, I don't know. I think it's exciting. I'm, I don't really care. I mean, some people get yeah. really like critical, like, oh, this is too many, you know, it's not the same soundscape. But that's yeah. not how I listen to music anyway, so yeah. I'm just making what I think is fun. 
You're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Let's take a quick break and soon rejoin our conversation with musician and artist Curtis Waters. Stay tuned. Every story told is a lesson learned, and every lesson learned is a story waiting to be told. I'm Abhay Dandekar, and I share conversations with global Indians and South Asians so everyone can say, trust me, I know what I'm doing. New episodes weekly, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hello, my name is Lakpa Sherba. I'm Summit Mountain Everest 10 times, and you're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Hi there, I'm Abhay Dandekar, and you're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Let's rejoin our conversation now with musician and artist Curtis Waters. Has, has that idea of like those soundscapes and like, you know, I, just speaking of Elliot Smith, I didn't even put in like pop folk in there either. But um, the, the idea that like there are soundscapes and there are different colors, you know, ha, has all that in some ways kind of going through that process and and then factoring in different opinions and and different vibes with your music. Has it in any way made you a better listener of music? Oh, way better. Oh my God. So much better. Um, like my friend Ali, who I met, I think a, maybe two years ago now, he's mixing this album. He mixed it. But yeah. Before I met him, you know, it's like the thing, right? Like the more, you know, the more you realize you don't know, you know, right. Like before I right. met him, I, I we used to mix and master my own music and, you know, I like did things my own way. And I had this idea that everything was like DIY, like DIY ethos. You have to do it right. all yourself. Even that is coming from like a place of ego, you know, because now I want to yeah. just make the best thing I can make. And sometimes that means like knowing you don't know everything. So like um, yeah. since he's been mixing uh, and like helping me mix my music, I've like been way better at listening to mixes, you know, and um, and yeah. also just moving to L.A. and having a lot of friends that rap. I'm like, oh, you guys are way better at rapping than I ever could be. You know, like I, I right. didn't even know this the bar, you know. Um, yeah. A lot of things, you know, just like every single thing that I thought I was good at, I had like yeah. a year and a half of being like, oh my God, I fucking suck. And just being sad about it and then being like, yeah. oh, okay, I have to be way better. Um, yeah. So you get better, you know? It's not, it's more than, you know, sort of like the appreciation of the borders of your own skill and talent. And then it motivates you to, to learn that much more. But then, you know, maybe I wonder if like that much more listening makes you that much more humble of an artist too. I think so. I definitely think so. I think when I didn't know anything, I thought I was amazing. The yeah. more I know, um, almost to a detrimental amount, I feel insecure, but it makes yeah. you want to keep learning and keep growing, you know, but it's yeah. great. I mean, like, I don't know, like just like this past two months, I've been really into like music theory and learning like chords and like diminished chords and all this other stuff that I wasn't even challenging myself on. And I had to uh, hand in a song late because we had a feature, send it in yeah. late. So I made an outro to it and I literally just like made this like beautiful, like 90s r&b beautiful keys like saxophone all this stuff yeah that only comes from being insecure you know what i sure. mean that yeah. only comes from being like oh i don't i'm not good at keys and then you right. learn it and then it's like great you know that's awesome yeah no i mean i yeah. think you're right that like that that's funny that you mentioned that word insecurity because uh, maybe a little bit of that insecurity also is a great kind of check on your skill your ego and and sort of keeps you yeah. hungry for, for like that next layer of the art that you probably are still, you don't even know that it's out there for you to achieve. Well, the exciting thing is it's always out there and you yeah. will never achieve it, which is yeah. why you keep living. You know, like that's just the thing. Like I think you just got to be excited to learn and like realize, oh my God, like as soon as you figure out this thing, there's something else that you'll be like, oh, that was genius. Whether it's something someone did like, you know, like, choir like choir like i'm super into choir right now you know and like totally. harmonies i'm like oh that's insane that already existed or maybe like yeah. next week some 14 year old on his iphone is going to create a new genre that takes <laughs> over everything and you're like oh there's yeah. a new thing i gotta learn yeah but it's it's just infinite you know and it's so exciting that's what i love about just being able to do art is just that like you always have to keep learning can i ask you one thing about that in that because this all sort of does 
you know, flow back to your own persona and the idea of your backstory and sort of this balance of both success and struggle. Is songwriting and music making and art naturally sort of self-therapeutic? Or do you look at it as kind of like a an escape or even sort of a companion when you deal with struggles with anything, right? Whether that be artistic struggles, mental health struggles. How, how do you look at the process or the creative space of being a songwriter or a music maker? I think the first thing music is to me, rather than anything, is therapy. Like, yeah. and it sounds cliche, but anytime anything bad is happening, anything I'm going through, I will make a song. And I don't think about releasing it. Most songs don't get released, you know? Yeah. Very rarely do they do, but like, there's like, I mean, I can co- recount songs that have helped me get through what I'm going through. Like, I remember writing the verse of Inner Child about my mom and my dad aging while I'm in L.A. and I'm missing them and I'm focused on my music. Um, writing that helped me, you know, like, because I was going through it. I was struggling, you know. Um, yeah. But writing it, it, it's sort of is permanent, you know, or writing the song Manic Man. I released Manic Man. It was about just my highs and lows and my fear of failure and all these things. And I released it and like yeah. millions of people have listened to that song. Millions of people tell me how much it means to them and how it's helped them. And like people are getting it tattooed and it's like, it, you know, like everything that sounds super cliche is true. It's like, it makes you feel less alone because yeah. when you're dealing with all of it in your head, it sounds like the end of the world. You make it a song and you put it out and people care, you know, and people are going through the same thing. Or even this song, American Dream, the second last song on the album, it's like this mm. super like five, six minutes of me screaming about my life and everything I was going through at a, at a really yeah. difficult point. Um, I listen to that now and I almost find it silly, you know, which is great because I'm right. like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's just a story yeah. like any other story. Like when, you, sure. when you see it in a song, when you see it in a thing, you're like, oh, this is a life story with conflict and resolution, like every story that has ever existed. Yeah. And after you put it in there, you're going to have another story in your next album. Maybe you're going to have a kid. Maybe you're going to blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever is yeah. going to happen. But, uh, you know, it just makes you, I guess, look forward to and justify how cruel life can feel sometimes when you put it on a piece of art, I guess. I wonder if it's all three of those things, right, that you mentioned, right? It's the therapy, yeah. it's the no, companion, it's story, and yeah. it's the escape. Yeah. It's everything because, you know, himbo is an escape, you know, because, like, there's a lot of songs like himbo, bunny, teddy. That served the purpose of escape. That served the purpose of right. being this like flamboyant, extra braggadocious character. Yeah. I wasn't really feeling that way. You know, it just you can, it can do anything that you want it to do. You know, which is yeah. the great thing. When you think about how you've come to that point with music being everything, right? The the therapy, the companion, the escape, as well as what you just talked about with kind of the. Um, you know, the, the beast and the, and the boon of success in this kind of industry. Do you ever miss the days of just drawing and designing clothing and selling it out of your locker? Do you sort of like, you know, become some somewhat nostalgic sometimes for that to be an escape? Yeah, you know, what's interesting is I'm looking to find that again in new um, formats. I want to make yeah. video games and I don't want that to be my job, but um I'm actually thinking of getting an associate's degree in video game development. I think you always need to have something. I don't yeah. think I want to be like 14 again because I was very scared for my future and like how I'll ever make money and all that stuff when I was a kid. Yeah. But I do miss playing and I, you know, I think art has become such a job that I think there's yeah. other ways, to, which I think, you know, video game. Yeah. Um, I want to start filming more, taking photos. There's yeah. always things to do. Cool. You know, and speaking of, of that, you, you've talked about this, I, I've read before, where you've spoken about fame as kind of a, a passport to uplift your family and sort of like that's that's the vehicle um, that allows for that uplifting and that success is kind of is the you know framework of that passport. Um, I'm, I'm curious, at this phase, you know, wherever you're at right now, are you still seeking fame? Is fame the still the um, the goal? I think it depends on the day, you know, I think yeah. most days that I'm not seeking fame, but here's the thing that sucks is if I want food on my table as a musician, I probably do need some level of fame. Um, yeah. I don't want to be famous, but I really want people to 
respect my music, understand my music, pay attention, care. You know, I think I want care. Um, I don't, I don't really, I don't care for like passive attention though. I don't, I don't like, I think stunning brought in a lot of passive, um, just like watchers, which I don't yeah. care about. Like, I don't care if there's a million people watching me. I'd rather yeah. have a hundred thousand people that really care and understand. Yeah. Um, and I think the way I'm going about even this album is like, you know, like the first song inner child has like a fucking one, two minute, like synth section, you know, I, I think. Yeah that's as much of a barrier of entry as I could give at this level where I'm right. like, Hey, if you can't even sit through a minute of no vocals and just a synth, um, you don't even deserve to be a part of this, I guess. You know what I mean? I yeah. think being more selective about what demographic I want listening to my music is I, I want them to pay attention. You know, it's the bouncer to your house party, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's sick. I like this. analogy. This is a good analogy. I, 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 I say we go with it. Right. Uh, the other thing I was going to think about was, you know, do you ever, you can you ever conceptualize a day where you might be singing or creating art in uh, Nepali or Nevadi? Yeah, I would love that. Um, I want to. I haven't been to Nepal in like 10 years. Yeah. But when I go back, I remember I went back in 2013 or 14. I became fluent immediately. Yeah. But when I'm here, you know, I'm speaking English all the time. Um, and I talk to, talk to my parents in Nepali sometimes. I'd love to go back. I would love to uh, incorporate more Nepali in my music. I, I got to do a little bit of that with the voice clips and stuff of my mom and my dad and my brother. That'd be great. Well, so far, and, and especially as this new album releases, you know, there's sort of uh, lots to be proud of and certainly lots to uh, share with your audiences and with your listeners. And again, I love that idea that they're engaged and they're present as opposed to just watchers. I'm curious now, especially in as you kind of reflect uh, on the journey and then also as you're looking forward, what 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 brings you peace? Where do you find joy these days as as now this kind of new music comes out? I think um, just realizing that the external factors and the validation isn't why I do it, you know, and all of it is a distraction. I mean, it's a means of getting food on the table. So it's important, right? But just making sure you don't prioritize that over the actual love of what you're doing, you know, like, um, I don't know, man, I'm fucking so lucky, you know, I get to dedicate my life to making these, this music and story about my life and my family. And I've had this idea yeah. since I was 10, you know, everybody has these dreams and ideas. And regardless of whether this makes me a billionaire, or it does nothing, I'm just proud, you know, like, I got to do yeah. this. And I got to like, do my best with it like fully make it my own you know and you know i'm like you know i want to hang out with my family i want to keep learning new things like i'm just happy to be alive and just i think um being a tourist on earth you know being like yeah. a visitor and just soaking up knowledge as opposed to being this conqueror and trying to be like look how important i am i think that that, that can make you very miserable you know but yeah. there's a lot here to learn about so it's exciting to be here you know well i know audiences and listeners are learning more and more about you and your music and your art and hopefully uh not just watching but really engaging curtis thank you so much for for joining us it, it really yeah, was a you. treat and i hope we can do it again sometime yeah i would love that that was actually like i think some of the best questions like best conversation i've had in a really really long time so i appreciate you you know listening and um taking the time out to talk to me. Thanks so much. And please check out the new album from Curtis Waters, Bad Son. Again, thanks for taking the time to listen. And if you like this, please share a kind review or rating wherever you're listening. Till next time, I'm Abhay Dandekar.